We're outside the High Court in London where the public inquiry is taking place into the murder of Alexander Litvinenko in 2006. And with me is Professor Norman Dombey from the University of Sussex, who is a leading theoretical physicist and has given evidence on polonium-210, which was the poison that was used on Mr. Litvinenko. Professor Dombey, if I could ask you, first of all, just to explain to us briefly what polonium-210 actually is. Well, polonium-210 is a highly radioactive material which Madame Curie discovered a um, long time ago at the beginning of the 20th century. And she named it polonium because she came from Poland. It doesn't have any real normal use, but it has, it's a very strong alpha emitter, which means that it was used in early nuclear weapons. So nuclear weapon labs are used to it and make it. It's also a highly toxic sub substance. And as we've seen with Mr. Litvinenko, and there have been other examples, can be used as a poison. Can you tell us what you uh, told the inquiry uh, regarding your conclusions on where this polonium-210 might have come from? Well, it's pretty clear that the polonium-210 came from a site in what used to be called Arzamas 16. It was a hidden nuclear city in the Soviet Union and it didn't used to appear on the map. But since 1990 or so, people have known about this site. And one of the things which happens on the site is polonium production. And why could the polonium used in this case only have come from that particular site? Because it's the only site in the world where polonium is produced regularly and in substantial quantities. But other countries have produced polonium in the past, uh, China, Canada, the US, I believe. Could it not have come also from one of those places? No, because all of those countries have given up making the polonium. The Ameri United States in particular imports the polonium it does use from Russia. Polonium is also used commercially in uh, devices such as anti-static devices, particularly in the US. Now, there have been some suggestions that it could have been extracted from those uh, and then used as a poison. Why is that not the case? It's highly unlikely because the polonium in anti-static devices is carefully packaged so that you can't get hold of it. It's on gold foil, which doesn't dissolve in any acid. It's in glass, which you'd have to break. It would, you would commit suicide because, it, because the polonium is so radioactive if you try to break it. And it, polonium also decays very quickly. So you need a continuous supply if you are, for example, to use it in some sort of solution. Litvinenko was poisoned because the polonium was dissolved in a cup of tea. So that couldn't really have been done by uh, anyone without very specialist equipment and the kind of equipment you would find in uh, the avant-garde uh, site? Well, the, at, at avant-garde they make polonium which is sold to the United States with all this extra um, protection uh, gold and glass and so on. It would have had to, the polonium would have had to have been diverted to a different sort of lab, a sort of lab run by secret organizations, for example, to convert to a, a liquid. So if the only source of polonium, potential source of polonium, is the avant-garde plan, but nonetheless it uh, somehow ended up in the hands of the poisoners in sufficiently large quantity. What are the implications of that uh, concerning Russian state involvement? Well, it's not really for me to answer as I'm a physicist rather than a political scientist, but I will understand 
fact that only state agents or state institutions would ever handle polonium at all levels, right from the production through to its use.